Hey guys, in here. Uh, we're going to talk about some basics in Drug Dealer Simulator today. So throughout the game, you're going to be trying to find as many ways to expand and be as profitable as possible. There are a few tips that we can get through to uh, help achieve this. First one would be uh, unlocking new zones, which would allow you to get more clients, uh, more space, and just overall increases business. Now, how can you access these zones? Well, first you need to just be doing your normal routine, building up respect and experience. And once you gain enough of this, you'll actually be able to unlock new zones if you head up to your shady comp. From here, you can see the requirements you need to actually unlock the zone. And then when the time comes is uh, actually where you go to unlock it. Okay, next up we're going to talk about police hours. So during the hours of 9 p.m. to 7 a.m., uh, there's a curfew in the city where if you get caught by the police, you will automatically pay a fine whether you have drugs on you or not. Now there are benefits to this time. The most important thing to remember about this is that during the nighttime, any activities you do generally are rewarded much greater between experience, respect, or even the prices your clients are willing to pay for drugs. So another important benefit is that during this time, you're actually also creating less notoriety for yourself, where the police overall are less suspicious of you uh, for your entire operation. Uh, keep in mind that while this is happening, you are going to be having to play a little more careful unless you want to be in a lot of police chases at night. Now the nighttime in the game can last a long time, so if you want to fast forward, you can press T while in your base, and you'll actually speed up the passage of time. Next up, let's talk about how you can unlock the mortar. So this tool is incredibly valued because it allows you to cut things like prescription pills, maybe sugar, into your drugs and increasing the profit that you can sell. You should remember though, is that when you buy this, you're actually paying for it with your bank account, not the cash you have on you. Uh, once you purchase it, you're going to have to select a place where you want to send it, uh, probably your main hideout for now. And then once you get back there, you go to the drug mode, you're going to be able to place it on your desk. Now, actually using this is pretty simple. You just click what you want to add into it, then select the mortar, and then you'll just start mixing it up. It'll just take a little bit of time, and then you can add it to whatever mix you want on your mixing tray. Now this is the fun part, I think, of the game where you get to just mix and match and create your own blends. Kind of like your own little Walter White. Okay, so next up we're going to talk about how you can get dealers to sell underneath you. Now dealers are going to come from long-term clients that you've had that are satisfied with you and are looking to get into the game themselves. Eventually, they'll send you a message and you'll just have to accept it and they'll start selling for you. They're very useful to you because they'll buy from you in bulk, but at the same time, they won't pay you until they've sold it themselves. So try to keep that in mind. Okay, so let's talk about getting additional hideouts now. Eventually, Eddie will refer you to another contact who has the ability to rent you additional properties. Now, these properties have different attributes. Some of them are basically only used to store your drugs. Other ones can vastly increase your sales numbers in those areas, along with keeping their respect for longer. Uh, some will have save points, some will not. And if you want to add uh, more functionality or more tools to them, you'll have to go to the furniture store to pick up some more stuff. Now, before I get too much into the furniture store, uh, keep in mind that everything you're doing here is requiring your legal cash. Now, you can make small deposits on the ATM to uh, cover costs, but you don't want to put too much in without arousing suspicion. So the last thing I want to touch in this video is the furniture store. Once you unlock the ability to find other apartments, you'll also at the same time get a message saying that the furniture store has been opened and you'll be able to go in there and make purchases. Once you're inside the buy menu, you can see that a lot of things here have different uses from increasing the speed multiplier when you're waiting for a certain time period to just being able to let you hold more stuff in secure places and including buying laptops or other locations so you can access Shady Net from more than just your apartment. Okay guys, that's all I'm going to cover today. Uh, if you liked what you saw, please throw a like down. Uh, if there's anything I missed, be sure to drop a comment and I'll see if I can add that to the next video. Eastern Club. And uh, be sure to check out Zim Plays Games.